I'm here with Andrew Malcolm, who is the national politics columnist for Investors Business Daily. And I want to ask you, you were on a panel yesterday talking about how media has changed. Yes. And tell us, you've been in media a long time. <laughs> so give us a quick rundown on how things have changed since you began your career. Well, when I went into media, I didn't have gray hair. How about that? Uh, that was back in the 60s. Uh, and it was hot type uh, and traditional newspapers, monopoly situations. And it, I've often likened it to being in a pharmacy where every day you went up to the counter, they handed you your daily dose of news that the pharmacist decided was yours, and you went away very obediently to read what they decided. Well, that's changed, and now we have the, the internet revolution, and newspapers are struggling through it, um, but whatever happens with them, the individual American now has the ability, and I believe the responsibility, to consume news in a much more proactive way. That is to have six or seven or eight sites that you go to every day, I recommend mine, but there are many others out there, um, to, uh, to get your dose of news, to triangulate, because it's up to you. You, you, nobody's gonna hand it to you anymore. And you can triangulate and you say, well, this guy said that and this one said that, it's probably somewhere in the middle. And to, and to consume news in a more intelligent, responsible way. It's very important because we don't, you know, remember Walter Cronkite used to end his show and that's the way it is. Well, it isn't the way it is anymore. It's what you make it. I have think that you'll probably agree with me. There's also been quite a change in the political landscape oh. since you started your career. And I think you've seen, as we all have, government is growing bigger and bigger. And... Um, as far as citizens are concerned, like you said, we have a responsibility now. What are you seeing and what are you feeling optimistic about this country and being able to maybe shape politics and shape what's happening in Washington? Well, I'm optimistic uh, about Americans uh, being activists such as yourself and thank you for your service. Uh, and getting involved at the local level, at least, and I think that's one of the a big credit for the Tea Party movement that that was um, portrayed not originally as spontaneous, but certainly was very important um, influence. Washington, that's another case, and I'm not so optimistic about Washington changing. Um, it um, it is what it is. Uh, we all live in cities that are kind of inbred and insular. Um, well, we don't all, fortunately. Some of us get to live in the country. But um, so Washington is going to be a tougher nut to crack. Um, but um, I'm hopeful. And if it bubbles up from the grassroots and the Tea Party stays active and there are more movements like that, especially I'm pleased with the more women being involved in the conservative movement. Very active, intelligent people. You can see the the backbench of the Republican Party with uh, Mary Fallon and Susanna Martinez, Nikki Haley. Uh, it's a great field of uh, potential leaders and Americans like governors um, in a higher office. It's so encouraging for the younger generation to see people with gray hair um, <laughs> using Twitter yeah. and Facebook and other social media outlets. What would you recommend to your friends maybe who aren't using social media yet? How important do you think it is? Oh, I think it's very important. Uh, you know, it's all part of this revolution where we like things on demand. When I was growing up, it wasn't a 24-hour grocery store. When I was growing up, if you weren't at the bank by three, it's too bad for you. There wasn't 24-hour ATMs. So there's a lot, and you, now you can get news anytime you want it from anywhere in the world instantly. It's very exciting. Um, so I recommend people get involved. They, you know, a lot of people who aren't on Twitter, I think, are perhaps daunted by uh, that everything has to be some quote from Abraham Lincoln, and it doesn't. Uh, I just think of Twitter as a sticky note uh, about something in the day's news. And even if you don't want to tweet much yourself, being on there, they have the hashtag system, and I won't go into too much detail, but they have the pound sign before, for instance, TCOT, which is top conservative on Twitter. So you can simply go to Twitter, search hashtag TCOT, and you can see everything about the conservative news. It's already collected for you that day from Twitter, and Twitter's getting 300,000 new people every day. So. That's exciting. 
Well, we want to be sure that everyone watches um, the panel that you were on yesterday, and they can go to steamboatinstitute.org for that. But I also want to encourage people to follow you on Twitter right. and to be able to read your articles. Where's the best place they should go for that? Well, there's two places. One is the actual place on Investors Business Daily. It's Investors dot com slash Andrew Malcolm, M-A-L-C-O-L-M. And on Twitter, it's at A-H Malcolm. Couldn't be any more simple than that. Um, we have about 117,000 followers there. We have great conversations, uh, exchange jokes. I get the late night jokes before they're broadcast, so I share the political ones with the followers. Try to have fun, because I think Learning is fun. I think learning is exciting. That's why I'm I'm an old timer, but I got involved in the new media because I think doing new stuff is is exciting, and I recommend it. Well, we thank you so much for being here at the Freedom Conference, and wish you the best of luck, and um, just hope that you succeed in everything that you do. And we look forward to those books that you have that are going to be coming out in films someday soon. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Thanks very much. Thank you.